Hello and welcome on Watches TV and welcome on Prime Time for a new edition of our Watchmaking the News show. And what can be said about the news? Well, we're just very, very gently leaving the COVID mess and now entering another international crisis. So how fantastic it this is. And to be clear, we're not here to talk about politics, but inevitably there will be uh, indirect consequences to the watchmaking industry. And those are a bit uh, difficult to assess at this stage. And actually, I haven't heard anyone yet anticipating the impact of these uh, tragic events. Quite touchy for sure. Anyhow, let's put this on the side and let's talk watches and remain in a positive mode. So yes, I mentioned COVID and yes, measures have been almost totally lifted in Switzerland. So nothing should prevent the huge Geneva watch activity set to take place at the end of the month of March from happening. And we're going to be in for some serious action to offer you an extensive coverage of the shows. And I deliberately use the plural because to summarize things, this is uh, what will happen between the 30th of March through the, uh, the 5th of April, based on what we know today. So let's start with uh, Watches and Wonders uh, that will take place at the convention uh, center near the airport of Geneva and no less than 38 brands will be located under that same roof. Of course, all the Richmond brands, as well as all the Basel World uh, transfers, such as Patek, Rolex, Chopin, Oris, Tag Heuer, Hublot. So a total of uh, 24 big brands, if I can say so. And uh, we will also find quite a few changes at the Carré des Horlogers section, with another 14 brands, including Angelus, H. Moser, Arlen and Son, Armstrong, Ressens, and Trilobe, uh, to name a few. But scattered around the city of Geneva, we have uh, more action with more or less all the players, the AHCI being united at the Iceberg Gallery with uh, some of our good friends such, uh, such as Konstantin Chekin, but also some cool newcomers. But uh, then we have the Barton 7 event with another eight smaller outfits, uh, such as Singer, Schwartz Etienne, and Genius. And then we have Time to Watchers with another 25 brands approximately, including Corum, Chrono Suisse, Lepe, Louis Rare, Seine, Reservoir. And uh, well, I just wanted to say that it's been really nerve wracking uh, for the organizers of this show as brands committed to, the, uh, to participating at the very last minute. And it's only very recently that they've attained the critical mass uh, securing this event, which will take place at the main Geneva art school called the Head HEAD. And if this wasn't enough, well, the fiesta doesn't uh, end here. And maybe some of you who follow the industry quite closely notice that uh, we have no MBNF, no Overk at the Carré des Horlogers. As these brands prefer to do their own thing, their own location, and some others will be in hotel suites, for instance. So yes, ultimately, it's going to be super intense. And though some of the venues will be accessible to the public, we are nevertheless talking more of a B2B event. But depending on the success of this, com uh, of this coming edition, we will see in the future if this could be open to a wider audience. We definitely hope so. But you can count on us to make you feel as we manage to sneak you in with us and we will do our very best to cover as much as possible what feels like a return to certain normality, though we already know, uh, for instance, that there won't be that many Asian visitors. Anyhow, we are already extremely happy to know that we will be able to see so many friends, whether fellow journalists or people from the brands, as it's been uh, quite a while that we haven't met with uh, some of you and we're really looking forward to that. Well, we are, of course, very excited by all this and uh, we do keep in mind that the industry is currently uh, doing super well, despite the fact that we didn't have any of these massive shows for the past two years. So the relevance of such a huge gathering will uh, most certainly be fully assessed once it's over because the cost associated for the participating brands, I mean, those costs, they remain quite high. Okay, let's move on the, the program. And very recently, we had the pleasure of having Madame uh, Evelyn Janta uh, come to our club space to talk about the legacy of her husband, Mr. Gérald Janta, and the 30 original designs put on auction by Th Sotheby's. So if you haven't seen it, well, I clearly invite you to do so. It was really interesting to hear some behind the scenes stories, which enabled me uh, to better understand the creative process of the legendary designer. Anyhow, you could bid online for these 30 lots over a period of 10 days, lots including the original design of the Royal Oak and the first go at it by Mr. Janta with this six-sided version that he rapidly put on the side. 
But both uh, Mrs. Janta and Sotheby's had no idea what uh, some of these lots could fetch. And following the extreme positive trend witness on the auction scene of the last couple of years, well, this phenomenon has been spectacularly witnessed again. The original Royal Oak design got sold for a wobbling 550,000 Swiss franc plus tax and premium. The hexagonal version went for 150,000 and we can uh, speculate without uh, taking too many risks that the original design will be seen at the AP Musée Atelier in the near future. I mean, they didn't really have the option, right? But other lots attained some fair pricing and just as a reminder, some other batches of such paintings will uh, soon be, be made available in the online auctions organized by Sotheby's again and this triggers uh, some other auction action until the main sales taking place in early May in Geneva. Until then, we will, for instance, highlight some of the lots brought forward in the rose gold thematic auction by Inaition, a sale taking place on the, on the 12th of March. So yes, plenty going on. And coming back to the May auctions, well, we will have a dedicated Royal Oak auction with 50 special lots organized by Philips and we can trust them of doing something a bit special. And another big one will be the sale of Gérald Janta's personal Royal Oak, this one being sold by Sotheby's. Quite something. So let's move on uh, to some other news and one of the big ones uh, was the announcement uh, made by Jean-Claude Biver of the creation of his very own brand. So this is something which had been in the rumor mill for quite a while but now it's official and we are really at a very early stage of this endeavor and just to let you know but uh, we will soon meet Mr. Beaver during the Geneva Watch Week to talk about him uh, uh, about all this also with his son, uh, he's also part of the project. I mean, we know the marketing talent of the man, but what's his goal and how uh, will it be expressed? Well, this is what we will try to uncover. In terms of new watches seen recently, well, and this might come as a surprise, but wanted to put forward a new Beaumet Mercier watch done as a tribute to French artist Pierre Soulages with a limited to 102 pieces, special Hampton coming naturally uh, in a full black attire with this textured dial, really nice. And though I haven't uh, seen it in real way, it looks I have to say, quite interesting. And 102 pieces to mark the age of Mr. Soulage, uh, quite impressive and almost as impressive as our video with Mr. Georges Dubois, the 100-year-old uh, watchmaker we had the pleasure of hosting here. And some of you have been wondering what he was wearing during this interview. Well, it was his uh, Patek he received in 1972 for his first 25 years spent with the brand. So yes, another dimension and uh, well, following down that line, also wanted to mention that we will have some other surprising and inspiring interviews coming in the next few weeks with some uh, characters of the industry and we just lo love doing them. Okay, I mean, we know that we're not going to hit uh, record numbers on YouTube with those, but we don't care and I really think that uh, capturing such uh, testimonies is crucial and beneficial for all watchmaking lovers. Okay, next product, and I know we're not talking mechanical watch uh, with the fresh, freshly launched uh, Casquette uh, 2 by Gérard Perigo, but following last year's participation at Only Watch with the Bamford version, it's not too much of a surprise that uh, GP followed up on this, uh, and uh, it has such a kind of a little bit of an iconic status, I think. So instead of coming in a carbon case uh, for the charity auction, that was, this limited to 820 pieces comes in a black titanium and ceramic case. And compared to the original model, this lead piece now features day and month indication, has a second time zone and even a stopwatch. So yes, I mean, we're talking serious and heavy electronics here. Okay, joke aside, this piece is indeed really cool, but coming at 4,500 Swiss francs, well, I guess you need to be seriously gadgetly motivated to acquire it. And to do so, well, GP announced that all the models will only be sold through their e-commerce site till the 7th of March. And if they're not all sold, then you will be able to buy it at certain retailer shop something uh, which irritated a few retailers. And we uh, know that in Switzerland, for instance, you can claim yours via Bücher. All right, next timepiece and uh, what an original and even playful travel watch introduced by a uh, German brand Moritz Grossmann with the Universal Zeit. I mean, I have never seen anything like it and a very different way of presenting some sort of world timer as you have your local time indicated traditionally with the central hour, minute and seconds hands. But then on the dial and through the world map, you will find another six different time zones and they all jump at the same time thanks to a disc where all these indications are placed 
and must have been a funny thing to calculate to get all this correct. So this watch comes in a steel 44.5mm case and movement and finishing are always top class with Morris Grossman. And talking about world timer and to satisfy the curiosity of some of you regarding what I have on the wrist, well this is a Chinese SEGA design Blue Planet, the watch uh, that won last year's edition of the GPHG in the challenge category, uh, meaning watches under 3,500 Swiss francs. And actually this watch retails for a bit less than $2,000, okay, to be precise. So it was the first time a Chinese brand uh, uh, won a prize and this piece is quite original, okay, maybe a bit hard to read the time at, uh, at the first glance, but the idea is that you simply read the time by looking at the cardinal symbol on the globe's uh, surface and the alignment of the outer ring and the minute disc. So in this case, it is 305. But the interesting feature is that to achieve this, uh, the minute disc moves faster than the regular minute hand. On the regular watch, when the hour hand moves by one hour, it moves by 30 degrees, while at the same time, the minute hand moves 360 degrees around it. And I hope that this dramatic breakthrough information didn't shake you too much. But on this model, we have an asynchronous follow-up system. And this means that the minute disc moves by 390 degrees for each trading hour in order to always display the correct time on this alignment starting from the center of the dial, passing through the cardinal symbol, and finally the minutes and hours. And I hope you got me. So this original way of playing with time is something we've uh, seen with some of Carrie Vutilainen's watches, including the fantastic piece done for Only Watch with the Between last year. Okay, last uh, timepiece with Laurent Ferrier who unveiled a new sportier model with the Sport Auto coming in a 41.5 uh, titanium case with titanium integrated bracelet. This first version comes with a blue dial with small seconds at 6 o'clock and the LF270.00 movement is powered by a micro rotor, beats at 4 Hz and holds 72 hours of power reserve. I personally like these uh, teardrop indexes, I also like this uh, date window and how it gave some kind of extra depth and I think there is an interesting and subtle mix of modern and a bit of old school design for instance when you look at this crown. Okay, so we're reaching the end of this prime time and just wanted to add that uh, we will most probably hear about a few launches before the big Geneva Watch Week. As a few brands know that uh, the, the media scene is going to be fully occupied by the big players during that week. And uh, some will actually wait a bit after this event to launch their new products if they want to emerge a little bit. So yes, the next weeks are going to be really intensive and here at Watches TV, well, we are extremely happy about it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all the kind comments received recently. Thanks to our patrons, of course, and see you real soon. Till then, viva watchmaking. See you.